Hello everyone, um, coming to you uh, from the lovely confines of my new uh, garage. This is where <clears throat> the layout is going to be. Um, if you watched any of the previous videos, uh, you may have remembered, or you may remember that um, I have moved to a new house. Uh, if you want to know all the reasons, uh, go back and watch those previous videos. But um, anyway, the layout that I had has been torn down. Uh, these boxes that are to my left are the remnants of uh, what I was able to salvage uh, along with the buildings and the rolling stock and so forth. Um, in this video, I'm just going to kind of give you an update um, status of where things are and uh, where I hope to go in the future. Um, also, I'm going to show you some of the things that I've acquired over the past few weeks and months from the time that I tore the other layout down uh, until moving here. Um, the move has um, taken a little bit longer than what I originally thought uh, to get all of the um, stuff stored away and, and uh, you know put away so I could free up uh, this one bay in the garage. So the size of the layout, uh, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in detail later, uh, but it's going to be about 10 feet wide, about 21 feet long with a center peninsula. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and insert a picture of that here so you can see it um, as uh, for reference. So uh, here's the layout plan. All right, so uh, the orientation, I think, uh, is going to be um, maybe a little bit turned from what I originally thought. Uh, the wider part of the layout, which would be the um, yard section, is going to be on this side of the garage. Um, the reason I'm doing that, since the layout itself is wider at that point, uh, I'm going to be able to store things underneath that side. Uh, things like lawnmowers, um, you know, other stuff that I can't hang up on the wall. So um, that's at least, you know, kind of the orientation. So it'll be uh, the, the yard over here, uh, the peninsula will be coming, um, I'm guessing, let's see if I can remember the orientation of the layout now as I talk about it. Uh, the peninsula is going to come from this end, I believe, uh, towards, the, towards the garage door and the bridge will be down there. So uh, with, without any further uh, delay, uh, I'm gonna go <clears throat> kind of pick up the camera here and show you uh, the area, the space, the layout's gonna begin, and then uh, we'll take a look at some of the things I've acquired. All right, so there's the chair I was sitting in, and you can see the pile of stuff that's over here. Um, obviously, not all of that stuff is, is trained stuff, but uh, you know, it's kind of, kind of stacked in here. Uh, still got my storage boxes and so forth. Um, but anyway, let me just back up here. Uh, I'm at the uh, end of the garage opposite the door. You can see the single bay door there and the double bay over here. Uh, I put insulation panels in that door the other night. Uh, found those on eBay for, I don't know, 80 bucks or something. Uh, they're, they're styrofoam, uh, basically EP ex expanded polystyrene. Uh, and then on this side, the side that faces in, there is a, um, um, I don't know if it's styrene, but it's a, it's a rather smooth material. So uh, it, it makes a nice, nice insulation. Uh, this door over here was already insulated. So you can see there's still a bunch of crap on my side. Uh, all these shelves are gonna be going. Uh, we no longer need the storage. What I've done is I've suspended storage racks uh, from the ceiling and uh, put a lot of stuff up there. Uh, those storage racks are kind of neat. They're around, I don't know, $54, $55 from Lowe's. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Home Depot. And I've got four of them up there, so they're working really well. Um, swinging around, we'll look back this way. So that's the far end. Uh, as everyone else does, we have a refrigerator in the garage. Um, but this is the space, you know, 10 by 21. Uh, and, you know, John Prescott, have to give him a big shout out for, for doing the plan for me. Um, he's made a couple of modifications that uh, I'll talk about as well later on. 
But uh, let's take a break right now from walking around the garage and I'll show you some of the things that I picked up. Okay, so here's a display, I suppose, of some of the stuff I've acquired. Uh, some of this was um, Christmas gift, was purchased with Christmas gift money and other stuff I've just kind of picked up along the way. Uh, we'll start over here in the uh, upper left corner. Uh, there's some um, four box cars there that I picked up at a hobby shop that was actually going out of business. Um, by the time I got there, the pickings were a little bit slim. So uh, I got those four box cars. Uh, I'm gonna have to change couplers on one. And also those three uh, packages of wheel sets, which uh, I purchased for my um, auto carriers. I needed uh, the smaller diameter wheels uh, on there. So I picked those up. Um, up here in the front are a couple of propane cars. One of them is an Athern Blue Box, as you can probably tell. Um, the other one is a Walther's um, GATX propane kit. And I purchased those to go along with this propane uh, tank set here. And I also picked up a butane distribution center, which um, will kind of complement the tanks. and. Uh, make a nice little scene on the new layout. Um, I asked John when he was designing the layout if he could incorporate uh, a propane facility. So that's the start of the propane facility. In the back, uh, I have a yard tower, which um, I think I picked this one up off of eBay. I guess I could show it to you uh, for, I don't know, four or $5. But I like the design on that. It's a little bit different than the normal uh, yard towers that you see. Uh, this little freight terminal was at the, ho the hobby shop and uh, I picked it up just, you know, because it was like seven bucks and I uh, thought I could maybe change the look of it a bit and use it somewhere. Um, over here, these two uh, Burlington Northern Blue Box units are both, um, they're brand new, probably, I don't know, 20 years old maybe, but uh, the one on the top is powered, the one on the bottom is not. Um, I've had the shell off of the top one, that's why it's sitting there loose. Um, I didn't want to, you know, put it off and on many more times uh, so as not to break those tabs. But um, I have uh, some Digitrax uh, DCC uh, controllers here that um, I'm going to put in there. Uh, one of them goes in there. Uh, as I said, the first, the, the one 6784 is unpowered, 6773 is powered. Uh, I picked up this Northern Pacific um, at the train show in Nashville uh, in December. Uh, it's new as well, uh, but it does not, uh, it's not DCC, but it is ready. So I have a decoder uh, for that one as well. And this Bachman in the front is something, uh, a little experiment that I wanted to try, um, kind of, <clears throat> uh, Courtesy of Derek Glass on this one, uh, Derek had repowered, or not repowered, but actually um, re, uh, re-controllered uh, a Bachman engine. And I wanted to try that. And I want to make this one a Western Pacific in the forest green color. If you've seen my previous videos, uh, you know I've got some GP40 Western Pacifics that are silver and orange. And they also had a paint scheme, which was forest green with the orange striping. So I picked up the decals that will go along with that. So, um, you know, this, I think what I'm going to do is uh, probably do a series on that conversion. Uh, the decoder for this one is uh, sitting in here right now. Um, again, thanks to Derek, he pointed me in the right direction of the decoder to get for that. It's an NCE uh, decoder uh, that, uh, specifically made for the for the Bachman DCC on board locos. Over here at the right uh, is this farmer's co-op assortment. Um, I've always liked the look of this thing. Um, I'm gonna have a grain facility on the layout. Um, you'll probably remember the silos from the previous layout. Uh, so I thought maybe I'd incorporate those somehow along with this. Uh, so this is a three-piece um, set, I guess you'd say, and you can see here uh, what the set looks like when it's combined. So you've got the grain, sorry, the grain storage shed, 
the elevator, and then um, also the silos here. And the silos I was able to find pre-built, uh, they're electrified as well. So you can see the little light up here. Um, if I point to it, you can see the light there. Uh, I'm gonna have to obviously enclose that in some type of a, uh, a shield uh, so that it looks, it looks better than just a light hanging out there. But um, anyway, that's the uh, all the stuff I've acquired lately. Uh, I've been kind of kind of itching to get started, as you might imagine. Um, I hope to be actually under construction here, probably within the next uh, few weeks. So uh, I'm going to pause here for a second. Put the camera. A couple down. of things I forgot here. Uh, I was wondering why I had so darn many decoders. Um, one of uh, one of the decoders is going to go in the um, the atlas here. Uh, so there's one for the atlas, there's one for this Burlington Northern, and the last two are for these two BNSF SD40-2s, which I uh, neglected to put out here. Um, also, I picked up a little, a little can of this blended turf kind of in fall colors. Um, anyway, so um, both of those uh, BNSFs are powered. Um, they're not DCC ready, so I'm gonna put the uh, other two decoders in so, there. So, um, as I said, within the next few weeks, I hope to be under construction here. Um, I've gotta get the rest of the stuff out of my space here uh, on the side of the garage. Um, I have some track. I've got some roadbed, which I didn't show you. You know, everybody's seen track and roadbed before. Um, I was able to salvage all of the turnouts and some of the track from the other layout, uh, so I'll fit that in as I can. Um, but, you know, I'm ready to start on the, uh, on the construction here, so uh, I appreciate um, everyone uh, sticking with me over the past few months, you know, as in this interim time period here where nothing has been going on. Uh, I've had a couple of requests for an update and so I didn't want to wait, uh, you know, another two weeks or three weeks or who knows, a month uh, to get an update out there for you to know just exactly where, I'm, where I am and what I'm doing. So, uh, again, appreciate all the support. Um, appreciate the new subscribers, surprisingly. Um, I've had some folks uh, subscribe that, uh, you know, while I've done nothing. So that's kind of that's cool. There was one, one new subscriber who said that... Um, he had watched all of my videos from uh, back in the day when I had the first uh, garage layout uh, up until the destruction of my second layout here. So uh, things have kind of come full circle back in the garage again. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention, um, I'm going to put uh, a heat and air unit in here, one of those split, uh, mini split systems. Uh, it's probably going to go on the wall back up here um, outside of this wall. On the outside of the of the building is where my other heat and air units are for the house. So uh, I'm going to put a mini split in here so I can condition the space. Um, that's the reason for insulating the garage doors. So um, you know this will be a big old room, uh, heated and air conditioned. So um, you know I want to go through all of the problems that I had before in the garage when it was too cold. Uh, to work in it or it was too hot to work in it and um, with the track expanding and contracting you know that just wasn't a good thing so all right I'm gonna wind this up because I'm starting to ramble so uh, maybe in a couple of months uh, we'll see some major progress hopefully in uh, two to three weeks we'll begin so again thanks have a good evening and uh, enjoy enjoy uh, running your trains talk to you soon